What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about wave drag, so what it is and how to reduce it. So let's say we have a an object of some description and it's traveling very fast, so it's going along this direction at close to Mach 1 or even greater than that. So the closer you get to Mach 1, the more you're going to be compressing the air in front of it. So the flow has to come along and hopefully travel around it. But air can only travel so fast, as can any fluid. So if you travel very fast, what you do is you're pushing all this air in front of you. And if you travel so fast, then the air that you're trying to push in front and get a, around your object is actually not moving out of the way in time. So all these little particles of air start to compress together. And that's how we get a shockwave forming. Now, this shockwave is nothing other than just all this, these air molecules going together, being squished together at really super high pressures. And that is a pressure barrier now effectively occurring. And that is what wave drag is. You have this high pressure here that's impacting this object now in this fashion, and the drag of this object will increase due to this wave drag. And that's nothing other than what that is. And technically, you can have this occur at less than uh, sonic speeds. So if you have, let's say, a Mach number of 0 0.8 or so, it depends on the critical Mach number, which we've covered in this video here. But let's say we have a sonic flow or supersonic flow just to make things simple for us. So how to reduce the wave drag of an object? Well, this is a question back in the 1940s and 50s when they were trying to break the sound barrier because they saw that as you approach the speed of sound, the drag just skyrockets mainly because of this wave drag. So this led to through something called Harman Moore theory that you need, to, which is a linear, linearized theory for supersonic flow, and it's pretty accurate. And this tells us that if you want to reduce the wave drag of your object, you want to have whatever your object is to gradually change in cross-sectional area. So for example, this cylinder or a ball, whatever it is, it's not changing in cross-sectional area gradually, because if you go from here, just right here, now you've gone from pretty much nothing to now quite a big cross-sectional area. And if you have, let's say, a an object that looks like this for whatever reason, you go from here to now here, you have this jump in cross-sectional area right there. All these things are going to increase the drag a lot. And this common more theory also demonstrated that the wave drag coefficient, it, this is really cool. So it's proportional to the cross-sectional area squared, which means that if you were to increase the cross-sectional area by 1.4, 1.414, then that means you get twice the amount of wave drag. But it's also proportional to one on the length of your object to the power of four, which means that if you were to make your object just a little bit longer, the wave drag would drop a lot, which tells us that if you want to make your object low wave drag, you want it to have quite a, a gradual change in cross section area, but also over a very long length. And this led to something called the CS hack body. So the CS hack body is literally ideally the best body to reduce the wave drag based on common more theory. And that CS hack body is kind of what you'd expect. It's effectively just a slender tube. So it looks like this. And what this does is you can first of all see that the cross-sectional area along here changes quite gradually. Secondly, the maximum cross-sectional area is, let's say here, but the length is very long too. So that actually reduces the drag. Now, in terms of how you would use this, I actually had the fortune of um, designing supersonic planes with this. Um, and it's actually not as simple as just getting a CS hack body, throwing a wing on it and using it. And that's because of a guy called Richard Whitcomb, stick Rick to his friends. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but this guy called Richard Whitcomb in, like, late, in the early 1950s, I think 1952, he figured out that if you have a body not just a CS hack body, but anything that you have, the entire cross-section area has to change gradually itself. So if you have a CS hack body, and let's say you put wings on it, well, you can make the, this is like a target runner, I guess, you can make the CS hack body change in cross-section area gradually, as you can do with the wings too. But once you put them both together, now the cross-section area of this entire object, as you go from this here to here, changes not gradually. So that's going to increase the wave drag. As such, you need to make the entire object now gradually changes, well. it's not enough just to make each component change gradually entirely together, it all needs to change gradually as well. So that's why you have to tuck in the fuselage a little bit here. And that means that in terms of an airplane, which is not necessarily axisymmetric along the entire um, 
length of it, for example here, this is not actually symmetric along the entire length of it because you come here, it's not actually symmetric. Then a guy called Richard Jones, Slick Rick to his friends as well, figured out how to make the object um, load drag with a non axisymmetric symmetric um, cross section area. So that is wave drag in a nutshell and what it's related to, the proportions of it, how to make it lower and why it occurs. So let's do make sure to like and click the subscribe button and we'll see you on. Peace amigos.